In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a 2D RPG using Godot Fallout 1. At the end of this video, you will have a little player setup that can work in a different direction. It will not be animated yet, that's what we're going to do in the second video. The core idea of this series of tutorials is to make a little game similar to Zelda A Link to the Past, Hyper Light Drifter, and with maybe, maybe, maybe a hint of uh, The Binding of Isaac. I'm providing the asset for this tutorial. You can find it on my itch.io profile. I will leave a link in the description. And as you are passing into the description of this video, you can check what I want to do uh, in terms of future video for this series. And you can also check my game Lone Night that is on Steam for Wishlist and also my other courses on Udemy. So that's it for the introduction. So now let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is like you need to download first the asset. I have put it on my itch.io that is right there. I will leave the link in the description of this video. And I have for now two things. I have those two files which are my player RPG sprite sheet and uh, also a bit of the background. Not everything is done at the moment, so it's just like it's gonna evolve, but for now that's what we have. Uh, so if, once you have done that, we can just go into Godot. So I'm using Godot 4.1 and we're gonna create a new project. That project, I'm gonna call it Zelda Godot for JD 4. And then what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna uh, choose a path. So me, I'm, I'm gonna go just uh, back. I'm gonna go to my desktop right there. And I'm gonna look for, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna choose that folder, second folder. I'm gonna create the folder here like this. And so like that, I have my folder created on my desktop. And I'm gonna look for the renderer. I'm gonna use Forward Plus, which support desktop, advanced to 3D graphics, those kind of things. But you can choose another one, mobile or compatibility. That's fine, me, I'm just gonna use this one. Uh, and then I can create and edit. So now that Godot 4 is open, you can see that the color is different for me. That's normal because I've changed it. For that, I, you need to go to editor, uh, editor setting, and you can go to team and here you can like uh, change it. Me, I put that base color right there. That's that uh, HEX uh, code. I put this one here. And so that's why I have that, um, that color here, but you can like pull it the way you want. That's fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a scene. So for that, I need to go here. I'm going to click on the 2D scene and that scene, I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it uh, main underscore level. And in that main level, what I want to do is like I want to click on the plus here and I want to look for a character body 2D. We're going to start by creating a character, so our player. So this character body, I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it player. And then you're going to have a sprite 2D. Then I'm clicking back on my player. I'm going to click on the plus. It's going to have also an animation player. Uh, I'm going to go back to my player uh, node. I click on plus. I'm going to add a collision shape. And the collision shape selected here, I'm going to go to the right on shape empty and I'm going to put a new rectangle shape. You can see now if I zoom, we have like that blue square that pops up. Uh, for now, that's what we need. So like, I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm just going to uh, double click on the animation player and I'm going to rename it anim. Uh, so now uh, I need to have my uh, my uh, my sprite sheet for my player. So for that, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to go where my uh, two uh, items are, and I'm just going to click on them and drag them into uh, Godot. And here, what I want to do is like I don't want to leave it uh, here. What I want to do is like I want to click on my rest folder, and I'm going to click on create new, and then I'm going to click on, on folder. And that folder, I'm going to name, name it sprite. And inside that folder, I'm going to uh, again create a new folder by right clicking, clicking on create new folder. And here I'm going to create two folders. I'm going to create one, it's called player. And then I'm going to right click again on this one and I'm going to click another folder. And this one I'm going to call it background. And then I can just expand it and I'm going to put the sprite sheet into background. And I'm going to put player uh, RPG into my player. So like this, everything is nice and tidy. So now I can go here and click on my Sprite 2D. And you can see here uh, to the right, we have texture empty. I can go to my player folder where I have put my uh, player RPG uh, sprite sheet. And I can just click on it and drag it up to there. And you can see that right now it loads 
all the items at the same time, which is not what we want. Uh, and we also have another problem, it's like we, if we uh, zoom on it, you can see it is quite blurry. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tackle the problems of like uh, displaying only one, <laughs> one player and not the entire sheet. So for that you need to go to animation, and when you click on animation, so with sprite 2D selected, uh, here you have after that animation. Here uh, you have edge frame and vertical frame. Edge frame I have 12, if I remember right. So I just have to put 12. And for the vertical frame I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to go to vertical frame, put 9. And so now I have my uh, sprite sheet and display only uh, one image of my player, which is what I want. And so now we need to uh, fix the blurriness of the pixel. So for that we need to go to project, project setting. And then on general here we go to texture and here default texture filter we put it we change it from linear to uh, nearest and so now you can close and you can see that we have like a crisp pixel art so that's perfect now what we need to do is we need to take the collision shape and we need to resize it so i click on the collision shape and you can see here i am on the select mode you have like move mode you have like uh, rotate mode and you have here also another mode is scale mode we're not going to use it here what I want to do is I want just to rescale the shape uh, of my collision shape to my player. But because we are making an RPG, we need to not cover everything from our player because we need to leave room for when we're going to uh, pass front of object. It's going to make sense when we're going to start to add a visual element into our game like background element, those kind of things. For now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to click on those uh, red orangish dot and I'm just going to drag my collision shape i think around here that will be enough something like that i'm gonna drag it like this and so this will be the collision shape of my player okay so now that we have done that what we can do is we can actually uh, also do one of the things with, which is like we click on our player and we're gonna add a script to our uh, player so for that click on player click here on that uh, sprite sheet icon and then here we're gonna create a new uh, a new folder. So for that, I'm gonna click on that icon folder right there. And here it uh, leads me to my res folder, which is the root folder of my project. And here I'm just gonna click on create folder, and I'm gonna call that folder script. And I think I can save it like this. I'm not gonna make another folder and stuff. That's fine. So I'm gonna click it, save it here, click on open, and so now I'm gonna click on create. And then uh, now we have like um, extend character body to this script that has been created. So now what we need to do is we need to uh, create uh, the movement. That's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to for that create a function. So in Godot for creating a function you need to tap func and then you need to give it a name. So this function is going to be uh, quite self-explanatory. I'm going to call it move. <laughs> That's going to be simple enough. And so here what we want is we want to have a way to detect when the uh, player is um, pressing on like a key and so we want to make our player move. So for that here what I'm going to do is like first I'm going to tap pass uh, and, do, and so I'm going to come here at the top and I'm going to create a variable. So for that I need to tap bar and that variable I'm going to call it input underscore movement and I'm going to set it equal to vector2.0. So now I'm going to be able to use that uh, variable input movement into my function move movement. So I'm going to remove the pass and here I'm going to assign my, uh, my variable input movement to get the vector of the uh, controller of my, uh, of my player. So I'm going to say input uh, movement equal input with a capital I dot get underscore vector. And then here we need to tap in that order we need to look for ui left right here then we need to put a little comma and then we're gonna say ui right so i'm gonna look for it ui right then comma then we're gonna look for ui up up so where is it uh, da, da, da. it is completely down i believe something like that yeah and then we're gonna uh, put also ui down and so now this variable input movement that we have assigned to be a vector 2 that is on 0 by default which means that it does not give any movement uh, gonna be in charge of detecting and storing the fact that we are pressing the right arrow key the up arrow key the left arrow key the down arrow key that's what this line is doing and so now what we can do is like we can make an if statement so for that we just need to tap 
if input underscore movement is exclamation mark equal this mean is not equal to vector two dot zero so this means if we are uh, not uh, equal to vector to the zero it means that we are pressing a key and then we need to do something so here what we need to do is we need to change the velocity of our uh, of our player so for that we need to have uh, something that is holding uh, that is able to change the um, the velocity of our player and so for that what we can do is we can uh, create a new variable just under input movement and we're gonna call that variable uh, we're gonna call it uh, speed speed and i'm gonna set it equal to be 70 per default like this and so now i can come back into my if uh, input my if statement and i can just put the column and here i can uh, say that then velocity is equal to input movement uh, multiply by speed and what we can do is now we can also do something for when we are not pressing a key so for that we need to say if input uh, movement is double equal to vector 2.0 so if it is like a completely like uh, equal to zero then it means that we are not pressing any key we need to reset the velocity so the velocity here we're going to reset it uh, to a vector 2.0 and now we need one uh, one last uh, one last thing here. We need to call a built-in function in our character body 2D class because this is a class that holds a lot of pre-made uh, uh, code that we can use, and we're gonna use one of them right now, which is a um, function that is called move and slide. And with that done, now we have one thing to do. So I've just uh, tap on Control S per default. So uh, here I just need to go on top of my function move. And I need now to have a function that is checking if that function uh, is um, doing something uh, regularly. So for that, what we need to do is in, um, in Godot, we have a built-in function that is called physics process delta. So I'm gonna show you physics process delta. And then what I can do is just I can call that function into this one here. So I just have to say move and that's going to be good. So now I can save and I'm going to save my main level. I'm going to click on the create folder here and I'm going to uh, create a new folder. I'm going to call scenes and I'm going to save my uh, level here. And so what I can do actually is like I can even create another uh, subfolder here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click on create folder and I'm going to call that uh, folder levels and so now i can save here and so now what we can do is we can see if we can uh, move our player or not so for that we need to run the project so we need to click on that arrow key here that little play button and we need to select current and it's gonna open our uh, window you can see that my player is around there and if i move you can see that now it moves uh, like in the di in the direction on uh, the, the, the key that I'm pressing. So here I'm pressing right, here I'm pressing down, left and up. So this is working fine. But now we just need to make a little change. So we're going to just come here on main level and we're going to click on the plus and we're going to create a new node that's going to be the camera 2D. And uh, here that node, I'm going to go by selecting it, I'm going to go to the, to the right and I'm going to change the zoom. So if I go back to my 2D uh, viewport here, you can see that now that we have created that camera 2D, uh, we have that sort of purple uh, rectangle that, uh, that pops up all around my player. And so here, if I go to zoom and if I, for example, put three, it narrows down that, uh, that um, rectangle, which means that we are zooming now uh, into our game and we're going to see our player a little bit bigger. So now I'm just going to launch the game and you can see that now we have the player that display uh, way better and we can move it and we can just like do our thing. That's perfect. So now what we need to do is we need to uh, create the animation and we need to also like import the background. That's what we're going to do in the next video. So that's it for this first video. I hope it has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe. And me, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.